defined by long fleshy green climbing stems, long pod-like fruits, distinct fragrant flowers. Vanilla is a tropical orchid that yields an extract widely used in flavoring food or impart fragrant scents in the cosmetic world. Orchids are finicky plants and hard to keep alive. This particular one requires hand pollination during a short flowering to produce the cash minting vanilla beans. The process requires an experienced person to perform, making it labor intensive, but also about 80% of the world's vanilla bean supply comes from one island, Madagascar. These two factors combined create a classic case of supply versus demand, which gives vanilla the second most expensive price in the world today. Strangely, vanilla prices are also known to be the most volatile, ranging from 50,000 shillings to 300,000 shillings per kilogram, depending on the circumstances. This, however, never failed the value of vanilla compared to other relative crops like coffee, especially in long-term investments. Tonight, in a two-part series, we look at bringing back the crop to life, the cost-effective ways to manage the crop, mitigating risks, markets and new technologies in vanilla production. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. In Uganda, we don't have a crop that can fetch you a lot of money than vanilla. A kilo goes between 250 to 300,000 fresh beans. For this one, I'm sure you can become a millionaire within the first two to three years. This is Godfrey, a renowned vanilla farmer down in Masaka district. Starting out 10 years back, Godfrey Chigoye joined his father on a vanilla forest journey. Their aim was to create a sustainable income that could not only rid of poverty, but also provide generational wealth. It's hard to ignore the fruits of this journey as the family takes through. In 2020, 2010 there, uh, with my father, we started this very garden. Oh, he started, by the way. I can notice so we started. He started, by then I was just doing some business outside there. We started with a, a small piece, about like a half an acre. We kept on increasing. As we talk now here, we have 3.5 acres, that where we planted about uh, 3,000 plants in, in the acreage that acre. So we are in vanilla growing. Right now where we are, we are in a vanilla forest. We are in a vanilla garden. We decided to start, by the way, this organization, OSCBO, started with a group of people, or farmers, who are growing vanilla within the locality. We started with the locality, which is the Rankon, and Chito uh, Chambogo, but later alone, we moved to other several districts. Vanilla plants are considered tropical. They prefer high humidity with moderately bright environments, indirect sunlight and adequate water, but not waterlogged soils. Extremely warm temperatures between 21 and 32 degrees Celsius. If you can provide the right growing conditions, these are the do's and don'ts of growing vanilla. Number one, support and shelter. When you are to do vanilla as a business, a must do, you need to look at. One is, this is a plant that cannot stand on its own. It, need, it creeps, it needs support. It needs to learn on, eh, or to grow on something, either tree or anything, so that it can support it. That's why we went into a jatropha tree. Because the jatropha tree, it can support it, and at the same time during the drought season, because it affects it too much, it, it sucks the water that is in that very jatropha tree, and then it can survive during the drought. So they must do one, you need to be with it, that very plant. Either a ficus tree or a, a, a jatropha tree, or anything you can afford but that can support it. But in doing so, you make sure that you don't, because the two compete with the nutrients down there. So put something that cannot compete with your vanilla 
tumor that not a high feeder or a heavy feeder. In the central where we have picked interest in vanilla, we are limited by space. So what we do, we intercrop in the bananas. So you need to put it where you know that it will get a shade. During the drought, it has something that can protect you from the direct sun. So in that way, you can put it in coffee so that coffee can provide it a shade. And two, in doing so, you eat from coffee or you get something from coffee at the same time you are. Because this plant we are talking about takes time. Number two, well-drained soils, weeding and maintaining soil fertility. You need to, to make sure that at least there is good aeration in the soil, good soil. It should be, although we organic farmers, we don't have poor soils, we can do it, make it the way we, we need it, provided you can make compost. But it's a must. If we are to go into other business, we make sure that your garden will always keep clean. What I mean, uh, you need to weed. Eh? You need, don't allow weeds to grow too much in your garden because it will consume. You know, vanilla is a, a shallow feeder. It feeds on the, on the ground, on the surface. It puts its roots on the surface. So when weeds grow, that grows on the surface, it will compete. It will feed what it will need for the vanilla. Number three, security is an important aspect to avoid losses. Because it is unique, it's not common, it's not all over the regions we have in Uganda that are growing them. It's only grown in some specific regions. So, and it fetches a lot of money. So it is attractive to, to, to Thieves, I can say, you need to look at security. Uh, you go into it, the security must be at the side. Because they still, right away from the, that vine we plant, to the seed or the beans it produces, to even the kirioa we talked about. Because after uh, some sensitization that is made, and the people seeing us on TV, that it's uh, something that can give you, or get you out of poverty within a, 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 the first five years, you were a millionaire, people are rushing into it. Number four, spacing between the plants. Uh, because this plant, as I told you, it needs a shade, that means it is planted under a garden. So in a, in a brief, it's an intercrop. So being an intercrop, it's not the main crop. So you cannot plant it as a pure stand. What I mean by pure stand, you plant one part, uh, I mean one crop in the garden. So that means we need to look at other space, other crops that are within the garden. So the spacing is always 20 feet apart, 20 feet from one plant to another plant. So when you calculate say, a minimum number you can put in an acre. But we commercial farmers, do you know what we do? These days, we squeeze to a tune of at least 10 by 10 or 8 by 8 so that we can harvest the maximum from that very small space. It is dangerous you reduce on its lifespan eh? because of the competition it's going to, that is going to take place. You are putting 10 by 10, 8 by 10, but uh, if you are not keen, you did not increase on the fertility, or you don't look at the fertility maintenance, uh, soil and water conservation measures, you will consume all what is in the garden, and then the next day, you find that they don't have what is enough. So it reduces slowly on the production, gradually it dies. It's simple. What you do, just know an acre is 132 feet by 330 feet. So viewers how to there, I can give you an homework. You just divide, if we are to use 10 feet by 10 feet, just divide 132 meters, I mean feet by 10, that is 13.2 lines. By 330 feet, divide by 2, I mean by 10, that is 33 feet. So you divide, you multiply 33 feet by 13 lines, you get the answer. Number five, availability of water. The other thing we need to look at is the watering. Because as I told you earlier, 
that this, the reason why we put it in the shade, it is automatic that we are protecting it from the sun. So that means it does not need sun too much of it. So that means during the drought when there is a lot of sun, there is eh, water scarce. So you need to water. The hand pollination process is difficult and requires an experienced person to perform it successfully. Typically, it's done by farmers who've been in the vanilla growing game for generations. In terms of labor, it could cost about 500,000 shillings per acre per person to pollinate your garden. It is known that vanilla cannot pollinate itself. It's a manual, you need to do it manually. You need to go visit a vanilla flower. If there are 50 or 100 in the garden in a day flowered, you need to visit each and every that has flowered during that day or the day. So yeah, that is the way how the two, the female part and the male part uh, grew there inside, one of which is on top of the other. At one particular time, cannot meet. But sometimes windy pollination can do, can favor you, but it is, the chances are just 10%. Still to come, mitigating risks to ensure maximum profitability of the crop. Now that you have the knowledge of what is needed to grow vanilla successfully, it's time to pick up the tools and embark on kick-starting the investment. But first, the basics of propagating, planting and aftercare of the vanilla plant. The vanilla is propagated by uh, using cuttings. You just cut from a vanilla, an already vanilla growing and then you plant it uh, the next door. You make sure that at least you get it from a disease-free garden. The thing is not disease. That two, uh, for the vanilla steel, you need to get a well healthy plant or vine. How do you see that is healthy? It should be at least of a finger eh, of this heart thickness. Your finger, just look at your finger. If the size is not at that eh, uh, thickness, that's not a good one. Yes? So, there is what we call snakes, you know, that terminology is in vanilla. They are what we call obsota, those snake-like eh, vines. They are not good for, eh, for planting if you are starting a new project here of propagation. So, get very good health uh, vine and then you plant, then get a longer vine. But when you are uh, uh, establishing a garden, as I told you, I had the must do things. One thing, you need to get, a, I mean, a, a, you want to stake the jatropha plant or tree and then a vine. Those two, when you are establishing, must be there. The first day you are planting it should be supported, even before roots growing eh, or establishing. It should be on, on a support. Then in the management, too, when this jatropha grows wider, sometimes, it consumes too much down. The way that it grows is how it consumes much down there. So make sure that some extra branches, if the plant is not yet established, I mean the vanilla, reduce on the branches. Here you put on it, yeah. Although 2019 prices proved to be more stable than the fluctuating rates of 2017, 2020, was forecast to see a 25% reduction in production, which could send costs shooting upward again. So how do we make profits? A vanilla that has been in the garden for the first five years, that one can give you between two to, 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 to three kilograms. Uh, but the one that has been in the garden for say 10 years can give you 10 kilograms. So the, the more it stays in the garden, the more it Eh? multiplies. 
When you plant vanilla, like today, it will take a minimum of, say, uh, one and a half years. Just close to two years. That plant you planted yeah, from the first day to two years, it will be in a position to give you at least a kilo or two kilograms. That's what you can take, two kilograms. Vanilla, we harvest it twice a year. We harvest it in July, I mean uh, June, July, and then December, uh, January. That's the second season of vanilla. So this first season, the June, uh, 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 July, as we talk now, this is October. Uh, this October, we are in product. I mean, we are in the fl flowering period. The thing is flowering. It takes eight months to when you pick or you harvest the first what. But before eight months, when you harvest right now, we we have got the first the, 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 the harvest. Now the flowering for what we call the peak season that will be harvested in July next year. You get it. That means when you have seven months plus two months here, or three, two, those are eight months, I think. Not eight to nine, like that. That's why six to seven. Then, uh, close to about three months from today, like now in December, we shall be pollinating the what would be for the second season. For this one, I'm sure you can become a millionaire within the first two to three years. How? Now, just assume we have one acre. And in an acre, you have only 300. Okay, just take 400. And you get one kilo per tree. For the first three months, I told you. Ah, uh, yes, sorry. You get one kilo. That means you are going to get 450 kilograms. So if you sell your kilo, Let's just take the today's price per kilo, which is now 70k or 70,000 per kilo for the what day, so and for today's price. So for that, that is about 42 million. Yeah, you can get from one what what one acre. Godfrey's journey has not gone free without challenges. These were the obstacles. Uh, 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 in fact, it is the weather disasters or weather conditions that are not eh, stable. Sometimes you find that uh, we get uh, hailstones, eh, they come and then they hit the, the, the beans. And once that bean is hit, there is a scar that is left on that bean that is black. So when you are vesting it, it will remain it. I mean, remain from me. I mean, remain there, and then it will just uh, the quality of the vanilla will not will not be the same. Having been successful in the vanilla business for a number of years, Godfrey plans ahead for the next ten years. Our future, we want to export uh, 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 vanilla ourselves too the areas where they, they buy this very vanilla because we have the ability but the only uh, little resource we have is the finance but at least we are building finances if we can attract all our members they come on board we start chewing then we sell as a group because what we need as capital is to buy from the people now if the, the people we are buying are our members they are free, they come on board, and then we process as a group. We can see that at least in the near future, we are to be somewhere. And I think we shall be fetching a lot of uh, money. So our future, then we want to expand, to put up storage facilities. Over 80% of the world's vanilla is grown on the island of Madagascar, which has been recently hit with terrible weather, failed crop yields, and not forgetting the pandemic. This presents an opportunity for new regions like Uganda to get back into the business because the market will always bounce back. Next week, in the second part of vanilla production, we look at markets, mitigating the risks involved 
and new technologies to boost yield production.